quite often with with humans we don't realize like what we're agreeing to until down the line then we normally sort it out but with technology like this it's imperative that we get it right first yeah um i i wanted to just read out the the, the so you've been involved with the um neuro rights uh campaign or project and um they i just want to read out the five neuro rights that that they sort of have suggested as adding to the UN Declaration on Human Rights. This is the right to personal identity to prevent human identities from being diluted by connecting brains to computers, the right to free will, the right to mental privacy, the right to equitable, equitable access to capacity building technologies, and the right to protection against bias and discrimination. Um, I th why do you think it's so crucial that we get that laid down before this technology evolves? Yeah. Yeah. So, so the answer is very simple. The brain is not just another organ. It's not like your liver or your kidney. So technology that goes into the brain um, are, is much more important because the brain happens to be the organ that generates your mind. So everything that you are, mm -hmm. your perception, your memories, your thoughts, your imagination, your emotions, your personality, everything comes out of the firing away of these neural circuits. So, uh, going in there and reading and writing uh, into that organ essentially reads the human mind and changes the human mind. And that's the essence of who we are. We define ourselves by our mental and cognitive abilities as, as a species. Because of that, we think that this is not just another technology, but this is one that goes to the core of humanity and, be, and should be uh, discuss in the arena of the human rights. And why the human rights? Because the Universal Declaration of Human Rights, better than any other document in the world, defines what it means to be human. What are the properties and our agreement of what are the basic tenets of humanity? So um, it's the most translated document in history uh, and it serves as a moral beacon for the world uh, since the second uh, world uh, war. So uh, so we think that this is where this discussion should happen at the human rights level. And we should, with this new neural rights, we should define the, the basic uh, properties of the human mind and put it in writing to make sure that when we're developing this technology, we don't infringe into this, uh, these core values of our humanity. Mm. What would you say to people who would say that it's all okay. It's all well and good that we would, you know, write these laws down, but I I can't think of a, a a law or rule in history that has been laid out and never broken. Um, and and I know that there are people who would believe that this level of a connectivity, um, b invasiveness into our minds and that that is too powerful and too dangerous to even have the possibility for someone to abuse for us to go down this road like what what would be your response to the, those yeah. sorts of concerns well first of all uh i'm actually uh, positive and optimistic i'm honest about this we have to go uh take this road if nothing else for the patients if you know family members or friends that suffer from mental or neurological diseases they're looking at you in the in the eye every day and say can you help me? We have to help him. It's urgent. It, it doesn't make any sense for humans to be able to send a man to the moon and not to be able to cure schizophrenia, for example, or Alzheimer's. I mean, we, we could do it. We have, the, uh, the, the, we have to develop the tools to do it. And that's neurotechnology. Technology is neutral. You can use it for good and for bad. Uh, in fact, I'm talking to you from my office at Columbia and right behind my old microscope, it's pupin hole was the Department of Physics. And that building is actually a national monument in the US. Why? Because in the basement of Pupin Hall, uh, they built the first atomic reactor. And that was the beginning of the Manhattan Project. And that's why they called it Manhattan because it was actually started here in Manhattan. And that uh, created the, the atomic bomb, but opened the door to nuclear energy. The same physicists who were involved in, in developing the bomb that changed the course of history were the ones lobbying, advocating for the ethical regulation of atomic energy. And because of that, 
President Eisenhower proposed the idea to the UN to create the International Atomic Commission that since then has essentially handled atomic energy in the world and fingers crossed without any uh, any uh, mistakes, any, any uh, problems. So, so, so humans can, we can organize ourselves <laughs> intelligently <laughs> and harness uh, uh, a technology that could devastate the humanity, but we can also put it to good use. No? Hmm. Uh, and the same thing happened before uh, with uh, chemical weapons after the first uh, world war with biological weapons. There are many of these technologies that, um, that can have devastating effects on humanity. But the, uh, the answer is not to forbid the technologies and stop progress, but to organize ourselves smartly, decide uh, who we want to be. And uh, just like this example from the physicists that are looking at us, uh, um, every day I come to work, I, I pass the building, they, they, uh, they demonstrate that you can do it. No? So that, that, that would be my attitude. That's what we're trying to do, to bring in this alert society of these potential problems not to stop technology, but to put the guardrails so that it grows in a direction which is beneficial for humanity. So what sort of time scale do you see this unfolding over? Um, like at what point do you think we would see, or do you have like a day in mind that we that you guys will achieve the, the, the breaking of the neural code? Do you have like a, a, a time scale or is it, is it do no, you that, to the next sort of? Yeah, well, this is what makes science so exciting. It could happen tomorrow, uh, hmm. anytime. It could happen anywhere, anytime it could happen. Uh, just like it did um, with the breaking of the genetic code. And that time it happened in, in Cambridge. <laughs> uh, uh, well, this time, who knows where it's going to happen. But uh, I can tell you that it probably will uh, require this type of new technologies to look at the activity of large numbers of neurons and, and be able to figure out uh, what are the, uh, the, the equivalent to the DNA uh, double helix uh, of, uh, of the brain. And what is the, the simplest principle that evolution has put in, in our brain that lets us compute and lets us build this mental world. Um, so that that's, uh, I'm, I'm living for the day in which I will maybe open a, a journal or, or or said oh my god this is what it is and i cannot believe it was so simple that's what happened with the genetic code people thought it was super complicated and then when they figure it out like this is so simple <laughs> biology is always like that so if people are listening to this and they are thinking wow either this is terrifying or i would like to learn more where can they where can they find your work and and, and find out yeah. more about this so uh, we've built a, a little organization that is called the Neuro Rights Initiative uh, out of uh, Columbia University. It's actually upstairs from, from me here. And they can find us in the web. Just type in Neuro Rights Columbia University and you'll find the, the website. We're also in social media. We're constantly posting things, uploading documents, uh, giving talks, uh, interviews like this one. So uh, we're trying to, uh, to have a a vibrant outreach uh, and public engagement uh, in these issues. I mean, we have uh, volunteers, we have an, a grassroots network that has over 60 people in 17 countries that are, are working towards the, uh, the uh, dissemination of these ideas of neural rights and the neural uh, human rights discussion of the, uh, of the effects of, of uh, neurotechnology. No? And uh, we're also working with many uh, countries. So uh, this week is actually historic because on Monday, the Senate of Chile approved unanimously uh, to change uh, Article 19 of the Chilean constitution to provide uh, protection for uh, brain integrity. So uh, as of... Uh, this week, the Chilean Senate has approved this constitutional amendment, and uh, Chile is also involved in uh, uh, a neural rights uh, bill of law, also started by the Senate of Chile. So this could end up uh, passing and uh, putting some protection, at least for that country in, in South America. No? And their uh, interest in uh, this approach, a human rights approach to neurotechnology, also from the UN, from uh, from Spain 
and uh, from international organizations um, uh, like OECD, like our Organization of American States, uh, the European uh, Union. So uh, we hope that little by little uh, this issue will become uh, important in, in the agendas of these uh, policy uh, makers and and um, yeah and, and just like would happen with the with atomic energy um, this new technology could be regulated or at least infused with an ethical bent from the beginning before we have uh, a uh, Hiroshima <laughs> yeah. thanks so much for listening if you enjoyed the show please subscribe follow me on Twitter or sign up to our mailing list thanks a lot to our sponsor Express VPN the number one most trusted VPN. Get lightning fast connectivity with servers in 160 locations across 94 countries. Keep your browsing privacy safe with ExpressVPN and get a 35% discount on 12 months of ExpressVPN when you follow the link in the description below. Don't forget my book is now out and available to order on Amazon and on bookshop.org. That's Brexit, the Establishment Civil War. And most importantly, thanks for listening. We'll see you next time.